Hello again SGPers, I'm Companion Wolf. welcome to another Smile Game Builder tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you how to create a Skyrim styled book reading system. This tutorial was going to be another crafting one, but inspiration can strike at any time, so the topic changed. Besides, it makes it nicer to alternate between topics, and this way it adds a bit of variety to the mix. And talking of inspiration, Bob Dylan once said, Inspiration is hard to come by. You have to take it where you find it, and that is very true indeed. Inspiration can strike when you least expect it, so you have to grab it by the horns. That idea or that random seeming thought the moment it pops into your head. Otherwise, it'll as easily slip you by, and unless you have a photographic memory, we'll probably forget it. As many of you know, I do play a lot of Skyrim, so that is one of my greatest influences and inspirations. And one of the most unlikely, and perhaps oddest places to have any kind of inspiration is at work. Or maybe it isn't, because the only thing I can think of while beavering away is going home and playing Skyrim, and just, just to relax and not think about my dead-end job. And that is the foundation of this tutorial, one of those inspirational moments I grabbed. The result is the Skyrim inspired book reading system where you can press left and right to read through the books and cancel to close it. If this is your first visit to my tutorials or you want to keep up to date with my videos be sure to click the subscribe button below and hit the bell icon as well if you want to be notified of any new content I upload. After the intro I'll dive straight in to show you two methods you can use for the Skyrim style book reading system. First things first, we need to set up the events to register the keys for turning the pages and closing the book. This is an auto start sync event assign three keys from the variable advanced box, one for right, one for left, and another one for cancel. Add a variable box check set to the variable for cancel. Its value is equals to two because that represents when the key is pressed. Under its yes, i.e. cancel is pressed, delete image zero because that's the only one we will use and then reset the cancel variable to zero. You'll see why this is necessary in a bit. Under no, i.e. cancel is not pressed, this is where we set up the left and right keys to cycle through the pages. In this case, I only have three pages per book, so only need to set up three variable box checks, one for each page. Each one is placed under the previous no branch, so if page 1 isn't equal 0, check if it's page 2. If it's not page 2, then check again for page 3, and so on if you have more pages. Back to the first page then. Under yes, you have another variable box check corresponding to the right key, which again is set for two for when it's pressed. There isn't a left key set up here because there's no need. This is just uh, the first page or the cover. Under its yes, add one to page number, and then when we move on to page two, it's the same setup, but here there's a left and a right. So if the page number equals to the second page, if the left key is pressed, subtract one from the variable page number, or if the right key is pressed, then add one to the variable. And it's the same with page three, except once again there's no right key, just a left key. So if the page number equals three, if the left key is pressed, subtract 1 to go through to the previous page. If you have more pages, you can add another branch here, 
for the right key as, as we did in page two. What this will do is it'll cycle through the pages left and right, stopping at the first and last pages. If you want it where you go from the end to the beginning or the beginning from the end of the book, we'll start by putting on page one a left key using the same template as in for page two. So it would be if the left key is pressed under its yes, assign the number to the last page we put into the variable box as is. In this case, it would be three. And under its no, that's where the right key would be placed. And likewise, on the third or last page, we'd add a left key here under its no, and then assign the page number variable set to one, the beginning of the book. It'll flip through then without stopping. The second event we need to set up is to check the condition if the cancel key is reset, i.e. set to zero, which is what we set up in the previous event when the cancel key was pressed. The reason this is a separate event and not integrated into the setup event is because it doesn't seem to work. This might be because um, the two auto-triggered start events conflict with one another from within the same event, so it needs to be separated for it to actually trigger. And therefore, in the condition box, the key cancel is equals to zero. In the event details, it should be triggered once only. Enable or allow player and camera controls and the menu. These are disabled in the book event, as you will see. And then reset the page number to zero so that reading the books again doesn't flip to pages other than the first one in the book. Now to set up the bookcase where you can cycle through the pages of the book. On sheet, the first sheet, which is the book's initialize, add a condition where the page number equals zero. Without this, it doesn't seem to work properly, at least for me. I don't know why, it just doesn't. In the event details, disable player control, disable camera control, and disable the menu. Otherwise, the player can and will still move around on the map and zoom in and out, which looks a bit weird. Assign one to p the page number variable. If you want to show a cover as well, um, page number would be negative one in the conditions, and then you'll have to change the other areas where you reset to, to zero as well. This just makes it easier to identify zero as the cover, and then the pages as their corresponding numbers. You could even have um, add a back cover with a page number set to 99 or something higher to allow the flexibility of adding more pages and then when you come to the end of the book it will flip over and you'll see the back cover. Sheet 2 for the first page of your book the condition is page number equals 1 triggered once only play sound effect for turning the page SGB already has one called book which is more than adequate Display the image for your page one, making sure it's fairly central on the screen using the XY coordinates. And you might have to use the zoom to make it fit more snugly on the screen. Pages two and three are exactly the same, except for the page number condition, and obviously the image for page two and page three. Incidentally, the graphic number here is set to zero each time because the page images are just being overwrite, overwritten and recycled, and this also saves having to delete each image in turn. You can just delete one instead to save time and space and effort. So if we now play test this to see how it works, you can see The left and right keys cycle through the pages, but if you press up, down, or any of the camera movements, I 
press cancel by mistake. So up, down, any of the camera movements, it just simply won't work. And then when you press cancel, to close the book, you can move around and move around on the map as well. And incidentally, yes, The Invisible King is one of my short stories. Again, it was inspired by Skyrim. Not so much something in the game itself, but a quote on the loading screen. You can pause the video to read the pages here if you're interested. Of course, this isn't a full short story, only the first three pages. One day it'll be published, along with my other short stories. One day, when I get around to, to it. So what if you wanted a choice of books to read from the same bookcase, not just one? This is easy enough to do, and you can use the single bookcase template and then tweak it to accommodate multiple books. The first tweak is placed after the disabled movement camera and menu. You add a choice for each book to read. I have two, but you can add two more if you want to, since you only have an allowable maximum of four choices. Besides, I think four books in a single bookcase is enough. You can add more books, two more bookcases, of course, and repeat the process. Under each choice, assign a new variable, um, in this case, book number, to the corresponding choices in the list. And then at the very end of that branch, assign 1 to the page number to make sure that it goes to page 1. On the subsequent pages, make sure the condition is set again to the corresponding pages. And again, play the sound effect for a variable box check, which will check which book you've chosen. And under, under each yes, under the yes for book one, this will be the first one, in this case the Invisible King, and then under no, add another variable box check to check if the box number is equals to two, and then the image is set to the next book, page one. If you have more than two books under no, then each variable will obviously go the same and and this branch will be copied with the appropriate page image under its yes. Which again would be set to the corresponding pages of the book you want to read. The reason for the multiple branches here using the book number is in this way be, is because without the second and subsequent branches, those loose pages, the ones that don't correspond to the chosen book, will override pages from the books regardless of which choice you actually choose. So now when we play test it again with each book, you can still cycle through with the left and right keys and read the book. So the first choice would be The Invisible King, which I've already read. Press cancel to leave the bookcase and return to the map, where you can either move around again or read another book. With the second book I created, these are genuine glitches and bugs in Skyrim. In fact, Skyrim is famous or perhaps notorious for them. These generally occur if you don't save, if you don't have any patch mods to fix them. And every Skyrim player knows and has experienced any number of these sometimes annoying but often very funny glitches. I try to capture them as soon as I encounter them because I still play the vanilla version of Skyrim without any patches, any mods, nothing like that. It's just purely as it came. And then with the second edition, that's when I put all of my mods. Again, pause the video if you want to read through them. Alternatively, if you want to see more of the Skyrim bugs and glitches, I have a boatload of them. Let me know in the comments below and then perhaps I'll compile them in a similar fashion here and upload them as a separate video or 
maybe even put them on the website as a sort of flip book just for fun and that brings this tutorial to an end in the next tutorial I'll continue once again with the crafting system unless of course inspiration grabs me for a different topic as it did here because as I said this week's tutorial was going to be the crafting system so it's deferred until next week now if you found this video useful don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one and give it a thumbs up as well I appreciate each one or if you have suggestions for future tutorials or even just want to say hello leave a comment below and I'll reply as soon as I can. I do try to reply to each comment, but sometimes it's not entirely viable to, even if it's just a simple like to acknowledge that I've read it. You can also visit my Twitter and Facebook accounts, both of which sometimes have unique content I don't post anywhere else. Or you can visit my Smile Game Builder subsite for more SGB related content, including software updates. That's it for another tutorial. Thanks for watching, until the next time.